going to talk about um, the NVT data and look about the uh, meta-analysis. Um, and for those that were here in the previous presentation, you got an insight into the new PV Plus system um, for presenting uh, NVT data. So I'm going to cover off on some of that as well. So just in terms of what I'm going to tell you, what you're going to get out of this presentation is that there are alternatives to Hindmarsh, um, if you haven't um, worked that out yet. Um, and basically the alternatives are Compass and Latrobe, um, and they're statewide options. Uh, Flinders and Granger in the higher rainfall areas. Um, Fathom where you've got spot type net blotch. Um, Oxford on the south coast. Um, Scope where you're using Intervix. And, um, but at the end of the day, we're going to talk a lot about yield in this presentation, but yield's only one of the components of profit, okay? And particularly for barley varieties, you need to know um, the other traits they have, so their disease resistance, uh, their lodging head loss risk, and their grain quality parameters. Because at the end of the day, they're the things that, that ultimately decide whether you keep or um, um, throw out of a variety. Um, and the yield itself doesn't necessarily um, get you where you want it to go. Okay, so if we look at the NVT database that we've got, um, it's a large um, um, database. There's 172 sites in it, and there's 92 varieties, 95 varieties have been tested since 2005. So when we present NVT for barley, it's 10 years worth of data that's presented, um, not the five that's um, commonly used um, in some of the other um, crops. The meta-analysis is done in um, New South Wales by Chris Lyle from Charles Sturt University in SAGI. Um, and it's important to point out that the same data that you use in the ag zone summaries that, you're, um, that you commonly see in the sowing guides is also used in the presentation of the um, PV plus um, graphs. So it's exactly the same data, just presented in a different um, format. And really what PV plus does is it takes individual site um, for individual locations and gives you the year to year variation in performance of varieties um, across a period of time and displays that. So last year I put up this chart and it said you know, this is how you calculate where you needed to be to benchmark the other varieties versus um, hind marsh. I spent a fair bit of time on it and I encourage you to go and look at, um, hopefully my presentation will be loaded up um, later on, have a look at it then. But really the bottom line is at current prices, about $2.65 a tonne for um, feed and a $25 um, tonne for um, premium for b fod one Malt varieties need to be within 5% or better of um, hind marsh to be competitive to return a similar yield. That takes into account all of the costs of growing malt barley as well, uh, any differences in delivery charges, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at a feed barley, you need to yield at least 5% more than hind marsh um, to make the same return. So when I put up some of the tables um, and, and you think about variety comparisons, just um, think about those, those benchmarks. Okay, so if we just look back at 2014 and say what happened in the um, NVTs, there um, was only 18 of them that are harvested. One of the trials at Meriden um, is not available for release. Those, um, a number of varieties out yielded um, Hindmarsh, so Oxford in five of the 18 trials, Granger in four, Flinders in three, and Lockyer in three of the trials. Um, so not many varieties actually out yielded um, um, Hindmarsh last year. Those that yielded the same in NVTs were La Trobe in 15 sites, Compass in 12, Rowe in 12 and Lockyer in 11. Um, but in last year's trials, um, Litmus didn't perform very well, um, neither did Munda or did Fleet. It's also important to recognise that in nine of the 18 trials that, that, that were out there, no variety out yielded Hindmarsh in nine of the 18 trials. So again, it indicates why we talk about Hindmarsh as being the benchmark, because it is at the top of the tree from a yield point of view, and so there are other factors that are going to come in to help you decide as to whether you grow um, another variety or not. Okay, so if we look at the big picture, so I go back over the 10 years, this is um, the meta-analysis grouped on ag zones, okay? And really what it does is says the yield of a variety relative to Hindmarsh, so if it's in red, it's lower yielding than Hindmarsh, if it's in black, then it's going to be higher yielding than high marsh. There's lots of numbers on the screen, don't worry about that. Okay, so first up, the blue boxes highlight those varieties that are in that sort of 90 to 95% um, yield range of high marsh. So, you know, Bull Oak, um, Scope, or Flaming are some of the varieties that are in that sort of target range, but they're not the ones that are actually interested in because they need to be 95% or higher. So the ones that are showing up in the meta-analysis for based on ag zones that are within that sort of 95% or more um, of high marsh, um, a Granger, um, Compass, Flinders, um, and Latrobe. Okay, if you just look at the feed varieties, again, this is the same table, um, just with feed varieties in it. <clears throat> again, 
these are the feed varieties that are in that 95 to 100% of um, Hindmarsh, so um, Fathom, um, Lockyer at a couple of sites, Oxford at a couple of sites, but again we're looking for those ones that are higher yielding than um, um, Hindmarsh. And there's only a couple of locations, particularly Ag Zone 6 and also in Ag Zone 1, where trials have indicated that there are varieties that will out yield high marsh that are feed. Okay, so if you just look at the meta analysis on Ag Zones, what it would suggest to you is that Latrobe, Hind, Marsh, and Compass have the same yield. What it also suggests to you is that Bull Oak and um, Scope are the same yield, but they're lower yielding than Hind Marsh. It also indicates that Flinders and Granger are similar yield to each other, and they're less than or equal to Hind Marsh. The feed varieties that are close um, are Dash, which no one basically grows now, um, Fathom, Lockyer and Oxford, and in NVT, varieties like Bodan, Garden and Munda and Row in the main um, have been uncompetitive um, um, with um, Hindmarsh. Okay, so if we look at the PV plus system now, so we're going to bring it down from that 10 year window just to the last five years, um, and I'm going to, I've, I've got um, Chris to prepare me the graphs for 14 locations. I'm not going to pull them up on the, on, the, um, on the chart today. I'm going to give you some examples from different locations. The blue um, arrows indicate where the, the data sets are from. The reason I've chosen those locations is in most cases there's five years of data at said location. Um, but in the combination there's 62 site years of data and there's also 21 varieties in, in the database. And I'm not going to talk about all those varieties. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you some comparisons between varieties. So the first one is Latrobe versus Hindmarsh. So um, Latrobe's in the red and Highmarsh is the black line. So for those that weren't in the previous talk and, and I know what a PV plus graph is, this is four Wongan Hills. The five years of trials are on this axis here and then we've got the site mean yield at that, um, that trial. Now the zero point here is essentially the, the site mean yield. So any varieties that are up above, that have a positive number, are, hi are yielding higher than the site mean yield. And any varieties that are below um, zero or negative number are lower than the site mean yield. So that's how, how these tables are graphically um, displayed. It doesn't mean across here that they're the same yield because the site mean yield changes um, from location from, from year to year. Okay, so if you look at this particular location, um, High Marsh and Latrobe are, are tracking each other, same at Narogen and same at Skadden. So if you go through the whole data set that we've got um, for that period, and bear in mind that Trobe was actually only sown in the period um, in NVTs in the first year was 2011. There is data points available for the ten, um, 2010 season, but they're data that's been created effectively by the models. Um, they're actually not real data points. They're, they're modelled data points rather than real observations. But if you just look at the 2011 to 2014 period, in 84% of the comparisons of those 14 locations, Latrobe and Hindmarsh had exactly the same statistical yield. So I think you can be pretty confident that when Latrobe um, is available to you, that it will give you exactly the same yield that you've seen in your paddock um, with Hindmarsh. Okay, the other one uh, comparison um, is Scope and um, Bull Oak. So in this particular um, comparison, the two that I want you to look at first oops, are the blue and the black lines. So the black is the bull oak and the blue is the scope. So we've got Buntines, the first site, Franklin's the second site and Hyden's um, the, the third site. So at the Buntine site, bull oak and scope are the same yield across the five years as each other. At the Franklin site, uh, in two of the five years, scope was actually out yielding um, bull oak and at the Hyden site, then they were exactly the same yield. So the relationship between those two is obviously not as tight as the High Marsh um, Latrobe relationship. It's, there are some are are periods where you get one or the other variety um, different in their yield. Okay, but if we want to benchmark it against High Marsh, the so High Marsh is the red line in these graphs. Okay, at the Hyden site, High Marsh was higher yielding in all the five years. At the Franklin site, it was higher yielding at three of the five years, the same yield in one of the five years, and um, they out yielded hind marsh in only one of the five years. At the Hyden site, um, hind marsh was high yielding in all of the five years at that location. Again, so if we look at the bigger picture, scope versus bull oak, what it says is that in that three quarters of our trials, the data says that they're the same yield and we get some subtle variation um, between the two. But in the main, what you would say, you'd be pretty comfortable in saying that if you've grown bull oak in the past and you're looking to go to scope, then it'll give you exactly the same yield performance that you expect out of um, your bull oak. But when you look at scope versus hindmarsh, eight out of, every, out of every 10 trials that have been conducted 
scope has been lower yielding than Hindmarsh. So the reason that you're going to adopt um, scope is for the, the EMI tolerance rather than um, yield per se. Okay. Um, Flinders and Granger, which are the, um, the newer um, high rainfall options that are, are coming into the marketplace. Um, Granger's been out for a couple of years and Flinders, if it gets accredited, will become available um, this year. So in this particular comparison, Flinders is in the black uh, and Granger's in the red. And I've just picked up three sites in the medium rainfall environment. So these environments were actually high in marsh as well. And these wouldn't be target environments necessarily for um, these two particular varieties. But I'm going to show you um, some, um, the medium rainfall and then I'm going to show you some high rainfall observations. So if you look in this medium rainfall observations, what you can see is that uh, at the Buntine site, um, Flinders actually out yielded Granger in three of the five years and they were the same in two of them. Um, at Wongan Hills, again, was in um, two of the five years, uh, it was high yielding and they're the same yield, um, yield in three. And at the Hyden site, um, Flinders was um, high yielding in four out of the five years and they're the same in one. So what it suggests in the medium rainfall, even though we wouldn't necessarily be pushing those varieties into those environments, is that Flinders has got a slight yield advantage over Granger in, in those environments. But if you, the blue line is the important benchmark, and that's um, high marsh. And again, what you see is that in the Buntine site, um, high marsh wins in four out of the five years. At the Wongan Hill sites, it wins in three out of the five, and the same in two. And at the Hyden site, it wins in four out of the five years. So in the medium rainfall, again, the reason why I wouldn't be suggesting that these would be um, strong options is because high marsh is still a better yielding variety um, to be considered. Okay, so if we look at how um, Flinders and Granger go against um, high marsh, over all the data sets we've got, Flinders um, and Granger were generally about, in 58% of the trials they were lower. Um, Flinders is the same in about 30% and Granger was the same in the 20%. So it's these um, higher rainfall, where it out yields it, that's what we need to work out where those environments are because that's where the advantages of these particular varieties come in. Okay, so if we go to um, some high rainfall sites, I've picked up 2J, um, South Stirlings and Munglenup, um, and that's where some of the advantages these varieties have in terms of parity mildew resistance and barley leaf rust resistance will come in um, in, in terms of farmer options. Um, if we look at the two, so again the same thing is that uh, black and red is the first comparison, black's the Flinders, Granger's um, the, the red. The 2J site, there was no difference between those two varieties um, in the four years of data that we've got. Um, at the South Stirling sites, what you've got is Granger out yielded, Heinmar, out -yielded um, uh, Flinders at two of the five years, and they were the same in three of the five years. Uh, and whereas at Munglet up, we've got a, a more of a mixed result, is that um, Flinders was higher in two of the five. Um, same in two of the five and lower um, than Granger in one of the five. So you get a more variable result at that particular location. If we pick up um, the comparator, which is Hindmarsh, and what it suggests is that at the 2J site that um, Hindmarsh still won in three of the four years of data we've got. Um, it indicates that in that South Stirling site, then Flinders and Granger are, are going to be better options than, um, than Hindmarsh. And, but at the Munganup site, uh, high March actually won in one of the years, but was significantly lower yielding in, in two of the years. So this is where the data suggests that these, where these particular varieties are going to become um, better options than growing high marsh, um, particularly where parity mildew and barley leaf rust come into it. But if you look at the direct head-to-head -head comparison between um, uh, Flinders and Granger, what it says is that five out of ten, ten trials, those two will have the same yield. But in four out of ten trials, what the data suggests statewide is that Flinders will actually give you more yield than Granger. But when you um, bring it down to the sites that you're interested in, that's what you need to look at rather than this obviously overall the whole state. Um, but you can see in this, these particular examples that you know, you'd probably um, be happier to go Granger at that particular location, whereas here, Flinders is probably over the five years might have been the better option to, for you to have grown. Okay. Bass, which is the one that most farmers are currently growing and they're looking at whether or not they should move either to Flinders or to Granger. Um, and really what the NVT data says is that Bass is lower yielding um, than Flinders and Granger. So, you know, Corrigan site, the black line here is the, um, is the Bass. These are the two, um, the new ones, Flinders and Granger. Again, not a target environment for these varieties, but even Bass is lower yielding than, than them. Uh, in this particular variety, Franklin, 
Bass was better in one year, um, worse than the other and the same in these three here, and then Bass is generally the lower of the three um, varieties in the Jeremungup site. So if you look at just pick up Bass versus Granger, what you can see then in about nearly seven out of 10 trials that you would say that Bass is gonna be lower yielding than Granger, um, and they'll be about the same in about a quarter of the trials. But if you pick up Bass versus High Marsh, then, then clearly High Marsh is higher yielding um, than Bass on a statewide basis. Okay, so Compass is the new variety that potentially is going to come in. It's going to be released as a feed barley this year. Um, and if it gets accredited, obviously potentially be a malt variety next year. Compass is derived from Commander. Um, so the 75% of the pedigree of, of Compass is from Commander. So we just pick up that particular first comparison. So Commander's the black. Um, Compass is the blue. So at Wongan Hills, there's a clear advantage of, of Compass over Commander. At Narragin, the um, Compass in two of the three years was higher yielding than um, Commander. And at South Stirlings, um, Compass was clearly higher yielding than Commander in, in, at that particular location. If you look then against, um, and the reason it's, there's 2012 on there is that's the first year that Compass actually entered um, NVT. So if you look at uh, Hindmarsh and Compass, as that's the comparator, then in one year um, of the three at Wongan Hills, Compass was higher, and they were the same in the other two. Uh, at um, Narragin, Commander, Compass was two, higher in two, um, and Hindmarsh is higher in one. And at South Stirlings, again, you're another switch over. So those two varieties will switch over in their yield from season to season. Okay, so Compass versus Hindmarsh, what you're seeing is that in about 40% of the observations, those two varieties will yield the same, but in about 40% of observations, Compass is actually indicated, it's indicating that it's out yielding um, Hindmarsh. And these are the observations that are more current in the eastern states. When you look at the NVT MET data, it would suggest that they're the same. When you start to look at the PV plus data, it would indicate to you that there are situations where Compass will um, track higher um, than Hindmarsh. Um, and you look at the Commander story, then it clearly says that Compass is higher yielding than Commander. And reality is, is if that's the case, if you want a variety that's got um, a lodging risk, the same as Commander, then you might as well go Compass because it's going to give you more yield um, than growing Commander. So I would expect that um, if Com Compass actually gets accredited, then the, the area production of Commander would disappear pretty rapidly. Okay. So if you look at the um, PV plus summaries, then what it does tell you um, is that Latrobe equals high marsh. What it also tells you is, that, again, is that scope equals ball oak, but they're going to be less than high marsh. Is that compass is an option to consider in the future. Um, it's equal to or greater than high marsh from a yield and clearly better than commander. Flinders is greater than or equal to um, Granger, um, but generally they're less than high marsh, but better than bass. But where that Flinders and Granger come in is that Ag Zone 6 environment. Um, so the Mungland up South Stealing sites or where these two particular varieties, you would um, be having a good look at them. Um, and again, in, in NVT trials, um, Bodan and Garda are just not competitive in those type of trials. Okay, I've got similar graphs for um, the feeds, but I won't put them up right now. But what the summary tells us about some of the feed options out there is that Fathom is generally um, lower yielding or equal to Hindmarsh, but it's greater than Fleet um, as the feed barley. And that if you look at the big data set, the Lockyer and Hindmarsh are lower yielding than Hindmarsh, but uh, than Oxford. But when you get into Ag Zone 6, that's where Oxford in particular um, has a particular advantage. And the situations where Oxford's out yielding Hindmarsh, it's out yielding it by at least, by about 600 kilograms. So it's a significant difference where um, those yield advantages occur. And again, a clear reason why in those niche environments where Oxford's going to be a significant choice to consider. Okay, so whilst I talk about yield being important, it's about managing variety weaknesses is the other thing that you need to consider. And every variety has a weakness and they're the things that we need to, need to manage. So what have I got then? Okay, five to be changed over. Okay, I'm gonna put up a couple of weaknesses, a couple of varieties, and these are the things that I think you need to go and explore when you look at yield, okay? So this one's about lodging risk. Now, I'm gonna put up just one trial, so it's not a summary of trials, it's just one location's worth of data. It's response to nitrogen, so we've gone increasing levels of nitrogen. Um, I try to show you the pictures, but they don't actually know if they, they show up very well on the screen. But really what the pictures do is reflect what this data tells us. So what we've got is a lodging score. Higher the number, more erect it is. The lower the number, the, the closer to the ground the heads are. And what it says is that Compass 
has poor straw strength and it gets um, particularly bad as you put nitrogen on. Flinders and Granger um, have much better straw strength. They also can lodge with high levels of, of um, fertility and nitrogen. The trobe has good straw strength at low levels of nitrogen, but also it has a tendency to show some lodging. Um, and while scope um, can lodge, it doesn't seem to actually get any worse in our trials with um, increasing nitrogen. It starts out bad and stays bad, um, whereas the other varieties like Compass start out bad and get particularly worse. Okay, um, head loss risk. Now this is one of the things that got a fair bit of chatter on um, Twitter. Again, what I'll point out is this is one site, one year, arms worth of observations, okay? So we've got to put it in context. It is one trial's worth of observations. And um, over on the right-hand side here, uh, the bull oaks still in a scope. We know that they're high risk, and in this particular trial, they came up as being high risk, and we lost nearly a tonne per hectare of yield just in shedding. That's what it looks like, a, a tonne of yield. But what we also found is the whole range of varieties are actually quite good. Now, every barley is going to shed at some stage, okay? So you, you've got to expect some shedding in barley. You've got to expect some lodging. But, you know, Flinders, um, Granger are in that low-risk um, Latrobe, um, low-risk head loss environment. But there are some varieties in the middle, so the Bass, Garden and Compass that are showing some sort of um, um, potential for head loss risk. Um, grain brightness is another one of those um, ergonomic traits that you need to be aware of. So what this is, is a combination of data from NVT and barley agronomy sites. We've done a regression against the colour or the brightness of, um, of hind marsh. Now I've just made my first faux pas in terms of what we're measuring. We actually don't measure colour. Okay, so colour is um, three-dimensional. What we're measuring, so there's a, a blue and a yellow axis and there's a red and green axis. What we're measuring is the white-black axis. Okay, so you can have varieties with different colours but the same brightness. So people get this terminology all confused. What we're measuring is the whiteness of a kernel. So what this data tells us is that, this is Granger down here, is that Granger has a naturally darker kernel than other varieties. Okay, so that's an important point to, to understand. And what it also indicates is that um, it doesn't weather any differently to other varieties. But because it starts at naturally a lower number than other varieties, it'll get closer to the malt one, malt two receival um, parameters earlier because it's closer there already. So if it's running at, say, 55, these other varieties are about a unit um, higher. So they might be running 56. So, that's, so Granger might be malt two. They might still be malt one in that particular scenario. If Granger's running um, feed now, because it's gone below 55, these guys here are probably running 55 plus. So they're still going to be running into malt too. So natural kernel colour is an important characteristic to understand about, about the varieties, and that's what this particular chart demonstrates. Okay, Disease resistance is another one of those traits that you need to, to um, be cognizant of for different varieties. So you know, for every, every disease, a variety has a weakness of some form. Okay, so, you know, in, in, um, Grange is really good for, you know, um, barley leaf rust and parity mildew, but it's got a weakness for um, um, scold. Fathom is being touted for its spot type net blotch resistance, okay? Really good in that one. But if you've got net form and net blotch, you're highly, um, you've got a major risk. Latrobe, very sensitive to um, spot form and net blotch. Um, bass and Compass, both sensitive to the new version of barley leaf rust that's out there. So again, understanding those things are really critical in deciding on which variety to grow. So really what today's presentation is, I'm gonna wind up now, Ben. It's about the broad scale differences, but as, as, but as users of this system, what you need to do is go into the data that's available and, and narrow it down to your local region and look at that data, not look at this broad scale data, because it's too generic in, in its recommendations. NVT meta-analyses hide a lot of the G by E um, data that's uh, variability that exists. And the beauty of PV plus is that shows you that variation, but it doesn't tell you why. Okay, so you need to use local site data and your local experiences to work out why varieties might have changed around um, in different years. So in summary, the alternatives to high marsh are Compass and Latrobe statewide, um, Flinders and Granger in higher rainfall areas, Fathom, where there's spot form of net blotch, Oxford on the south coast, and obviously Scope, where you've got intervix. The, um, if you want to make your own PV plus um, graphs, then go to NVT online, 
look up the NV Yield tool. You can make your own. They're not as fancy as the ones that um, the SAGI group can produce for us, but they give you the same principles. Um, and yield is only part of the, um, the yield profit um, puzzle and that you need to know the weaknesses of your varieties and that the sowing guide and also the Microp Barley app, which will have a variety selector um, in it coming out now, um, will contain um, important agronomic information that you need to know. Thanks, Ben. Thank you.